people Nugging. don't know, the idea of negging is like a backhanded compliment that you would give a woman. But it's supposed to really be a very subtle backhanded compliment. And then yeah, guys are just to be like... a backfisted compliment. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian Jacob Williams from Wildin' Out. And we are here to discuss getting over anxiety, approaching women, why you need to practice of being honest, the problem with pickup artists. And I actually go through conversations that I've had with him because he's been under my tutelage for a couple of months now. And we talk about his progress and I explain the yeah. program and how I put guys through. It's and, and like a transition. real like a real time example of uh, what the program is and, and uh, what you teach from like the basics. But uh, if you love the show and you've been with the show, one way you can support the show is uh, join us over at Patreon, patreon.com slash manschool202. We do bonus content over there, uh, uh, including the listener mail. And uh, this week's bonus content is we continue our conversation with and about uh, Jacob. We talk about, you know, why not being a liar and uh, basically what the what fears men have when they're approaching women and like uh, all the difficulties and all the stuff that we revert to. And it's, uh, it's some really good stuff over there at Patreon. Plus, uh, if you want consultations, you could uh, reach out uh, via email, advicefromharry at gmail.com, or uh, for Dante, go to dantenero.com and click on consult. All right, let's get into it. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, y'all? What's up, Square Pimp Brigade? GYBB gets your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to tell you why I'm excited. First and, first and foremost, let me talk to my heart, partner in crime. What up, Harry? How you feeling, baby? I'm feeling great, man. You know, I mean, having a tough time keeping these gators down. But other than that, feeling great. Cool, cool, cool. Um... This is now. I know I've said that this is a special show 500, 600, 600 times now, Harry. Uh, uh, about 551 would be yeah. today, but this time I mean it. And this is why this is why this is a special show. Uh, because Jacob has been on the show before, and uh, not intensively, I have been consulting with Dave Jacob and and talking him talking to him about technique so what's great about this this is this is me putting through putting jacob through the motions if you were to call me up and consult with me and i put you through the steps of just having more confidence learning more game just really kind of the things that i believe is things that we espouse on the show all the time that th that it could be taught i just want to say that it could be taught and Although Jacob is not in the in the uh, he hasn't gotten his black belt yet, but we wanted to talk about this in terms of the last time we spoke to him and the, and the fact that I was there was some observations and stuff I made before, and we'll talk about that. And uh, so that's why this is going to be dope. So the the I mean, first of all, Jacob, man, thanks for coming, dog. I mean, I appreciate you being an open book about this too because i mean some dudes would be insecure about it and one of the things that, that i think is interesting about you know if you're doing these cons consultations is is something i think that i said to you initially was there's no shame in not knowing something that you've never been trained to do yeah you know i i think the the thing that two things that i think men are supposed to be good at is uh relationships and sex and None of us, I mean, or less very few of us have had coaches or or even somebody that they could confide in to to kind of guide you in the right direction. And so we're literally the blind leading the blind. And and then you have on the Internet, you have so many dudes who are exploiting the 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 fact that the, that so many dudes don't know their ass from their elbow or how to kind of move this forward and so was this is i think this is going to be interesting because you get a chance to kind of talk about what your experience is yeah absolutely um yeah i definitely felt like yeah that's like something i've struggled with a long time like figuring out dating stuff especially uh growing up as an only child who had like parents that were kind of introverted and kept to themselves and didn't really date a lot of people before they met each other that right. kind of thing so it was kind of interesting, like, 
yeah, just kind of struggling with this for years. And the stuff you told me about has been, yeah, super helpful uh, for sure. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so um, yeah, it's been really interesting to try to, it was like really scary at first and it's, I've been able to kind of do it with these kind of like baby steps that really got me more confident, I think with, um, yeah, you know, talking to people and that kind of thing. Let me ask you this. I I'm not sure. How many times did we speak? Maybe four? Uh, actually, I think it was less than that. I think maybe uh, Three? like twice. Twice, maybe. I think we maybe talked th twice on the phone since the podcast. And then maybe maybe a third when, when we were talking about rebooking you and stuff and we talked a little bit about some of the things that go on. So I just want to keep that in mind. And it's only, it was only, you know, it wasn't extensive. Like I wasn't on your back. In fact, I have forgot that we were going to do this and I kind of let, but what's great about it is you kind of took the advice and kind of moved forward with the advice in the first place. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, this is actually exactly the kind of thing I've been looking for. Cause uh, you know, I feel lucky that I'm a working comedian and happy about a lot of parts of my life, but dating is always, like I said, has been something I've been struggling with for a long time. And uh, I think it was helpful to have kind of this, framework that you mentioned the last time I was on the podcast um which uh and then I've been keeping track of this thing I've been doing every day which I think has been I've been doing like 75 days of it so far wow um and um it's been yeah really uh, super helpful um definitely scary at first sometimes still scary to me but it gets like a little easy but then you know ended mm. up being I've never had like it's more just me being nervous ahead of time, but then it's never, yeah. I've never had like any bad results from it or anything. Right. Uh, so and it's been like, what's interesting helpful. too is no, I mean, literally had guys who, who have paid for consultations with me. I've guided them in this, this is what you need. This is the quantity you need. And I'm, I, you're, you're probably the first dude, maybe, I won't say you're the first dude, but you, anybody that I spoke to, you're probably the first dude that did it in the, in the fact, in the way that I was saying to do it, like just followed the rules and said, okay, this is what Dante says to do. What, what I'm doing is not working. So let me do this. And you did it pretty much word for word, like what yeah. I asked you to do. Yeah, I actually took it really seriously. I think um, I am kind of part of me is like naturally like task oriented in terms of yeah. like whether I'm doing comedy and like I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, I want to get up a lot or working, trying to work out consistently. But uh, so it was helpful to have this framework of like, OK, I'm going to give five compliments to five different women I don't know every day. And I have, before I started, I was like, I don't think I can pull this off, honestly, right, right. because like, I grew up very shy, very like in my head overthinking a lot of anxiety and uh but i have i've literally done it every day at least five sometimes more but at least five compliments a day to someone i didn't know right for the last 75 days so like two and a half months or whatever that is um and uh yeah so it's been like i feel like it's definitely made me kind of slowly more confident it's definitely it's not like you said like yeah i don't feel like i'm an expert on anything but it's it's definitely right. helped me come out of my shell a bit in terms of right like right being more social and more comfortable starting conversations and, and to keep in mind it's been you and i've had maybe two calls but just doing the first yeah. couple of steps of the of the plan that i put together in general is was was at least moved you forward so um, let me go over the first part. The first part is that we say this over and over again and then we explain what it is. We lay in the five bricks. It's going out, talking to five women a day, um, paying a compliment to five women a day. The only the only um, parameters of those compliments would be to um, uh, only pay a compliment that's truthful, right? Mm -hmm. And secondly, only and it doesn't necessarily have to be somebody who you're trying to have sex with or even somebody that you're attractive to. You can compliment somebody's shoes, but it needs to be five a day every day. Right. Yeah. And the, the thought process behind that is to, to is a uh, is um what I what psychiatrists call exposure therapy. Yeah. So now don't get me wrong. I mean, you do doing that alone will help you, but there was nuance to that, that I, 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 you know, you have to consult with me or whatever to, to give you the nuance. But even if you just do that, 
the, there's nuance to it. And one of the one of the things, the reason why it's I believe that it's so um, it, it, why it's so effective is, first of all, you're not looking for anything in return. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's the intention point. is not to get a phone number. The intention is not to get a response. The intention is not even to get a thank you. The only thing that I'm asking you to do is just to put yourself out there, pay a compliment. I want you to be mindful of telling the truth. I want you to be uh, mindful of because you're telling the truth. There's an intentfulness to that, which um, what? so this is a simple task. Um, there's a simple quantity of it, but reason why it's effective is because it 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 starts to build the fundamental principles that make you more attractive in the course of the whole process. Number one is that you're telling the truth. Mm -hmm. um, there's always going to be good liars. There's always going to be people who are great at lying, but there's never going to be somebody who doesn't lie and at some point in time uh, doesn't get exposed for being a liar. It's just an impossibility. Yeah. Um, no matter how great somebody is, and we, we see this over and over again. This is the same thing that happens with joke thieves in comedy. Anybody who's stealing jokes continues to steal jokes. And eventually we find out who it was, who it wasn't. Well, this you do. You do say one of my favorite sayings that you came up with is uh, that you don't believe in karma, but you do believe in probability. Right. Right. Math. The math. Yeah. Right? It's like that quote, like you can fool some people all the time and all the people some of the time, but not all the People can't fool all, all the, the people all the time, right? Yeah, <laughs> or whatever. I yeah, yeah. yeah. Abraham Lincoln uh, or something. I don't know. Yeah, uh, but the I think the other part of it is that you know when and what Harry is talking about the the whole idea of the intense uh, the probability is the bottom line is if you keep lying eventually, yeah, you are gonna get caught. I mean, Absolutely. now yeah. you may be able to lie once or twice. You may be able to lie. I mean, you can roll the dice right and 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 get sevens. Every for, for a lot of times, but eventually you will crap out, you know, so yeah. that's just the, the law of numbers. And so what Harry is talking about is my point is, I, you know, I, like I've seen horrible people get horrible, you know, do get, get great things for doing horrible shit. But I've also sure. seen uh, there's a situation. But what happens is when somebody's rewarded by some certain things they continue to do it and then they eventually get caught and so the importance of honesty is the most thing attractive because if a woman doesn't feel comfortable with you because she doesn't trust you um then she will never feel comfortable with you once she can't trust you then the then you 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 expose the attraction to something else now when you are solid and you are trustworthy that's something that even if you end up even if you end up not being together and not liking each other or, you know, things go to course, the, the fact is there's a certain genuine respect that this woman will have for you, regardless of whether you're sexually involved or not. And mm -hmm. and that honesty is all of it. So it's, it's on every level, meaning nobody's saying that you can't be a hoe, run around and sleep with who you want to sleep. Shout out to Harry. That's um, right. Listen, <laughs> I've been out there. I've been but, out there on the streets, man. I mean, Harry's <laughs> Harry's taught me the way of being a host. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sometimes you want to get those numbers up. That's all. I'm, I'm trying to help the community. I call it community service. Right. Harry was like, Harry was like young. He used to call me young Padawan. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> but, um, you know, but the problem is when you if that is the lifestyle you want, if you're talking to girls and, you know, a lot of guys like kind of you, we were talking about how you have like relationship face, like, you know, you date a woman and right away she's figure, oh, this is this guy wants a relationship. And that may or not be true. But I think the perception of people is the way the perception and vice versa. So. Um, so what, I, what I'm but the, the reality is. It, it would not seem like it's necessary, but we need to practice being honest because yes. so much of what we do every day is lies, exaggerations or half truths or, you know, or and, and that honesty is also comes into play. I mean, just being an honest person about who and what you are, but it's also about being honest about how you feel about a situation. So even if you're not a guy who would be malicious, but I could definitely see you a guy that if you didn't like somebody in the way that you would kind of put up with it because you don't want to hurt their feelings. Sure. And yeah. Which is, you know, is, uh, 
it's a form of have, lying to a degree yeah. which is not a yeah. it is lying it is yeah. lying if yeah you're definitely not in the telling the truth it, that's what a lie is even if it's for um even if for the good sake intentions of, uh, yeah. the good intentions but what happens is you thinking that's good intention takes away from your personal value and i'm not saying you know if somebody disgusts you, you need to let them know. You need to call them up and tell them that you know, oh, your body is disgusting, right? But what I'm saying is you need to be clear about what you like and what you don't like, what your preferences yeah. are, what you're comfortable with, and you need to be able to say that regardless of the consequences involved. Yeah, definitely. And I, and I think that's what women find attractive is the fact that Telling the truth and being honest is gives you undue pressure. Like you could go around the world telling people what they want to hear all the time, which often a lot of people do. Um, but when you when a woman finds a guy who is his has a level of integrity that they're not willing, a level of manhood that they're not willing to compromise on any level they will always like that guy will always be more attractive than a guy who's a who's a dirtbag even a dude who's lying to them telling them what they want to hear it's only a matter of time so that doesn't mean anything to them because they know it doesn't come from 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 truth and there's always a degree of that so but mm -hmm. the truth in giving the compliment is important because it's a practice of being truthful yeah definitely. which you would think that you don't have to do that but you do you do. So, you you know, so even when you're paying the compliments and as much as it seems like a very different thing to lie to somebody to hurt that not to hurt them feelings or lie to somebody to get in their pants or lie to somebody because you don't think that you're worthy. It doesn't matter how it manifests itself. It's still a lie. And that takes away from your integrity. And your integrity is at the basis of your attraction. Because if you don't have that, you don't have it. And so practicing to tell that, uh, you know, if you I, and I would say to you, if you're going to pay a compliment and you can't come up with something that you find attractive, you know, even if it's the the texture of the wool on her coat, you know, <laughs> as long as it's honest, yeah, the simple sure. fact that there's a thought process for you to be honest changes who you are as a person. Across the board, because once you start practicing truth like that, it bleeds into everything that you do. And you become more impactful. And I've said this, I say this to young comics all the time is two things that we do. We as comics, we get paid for our words. Right. Stop giving them, stop giving them away for free, which means be clear, concise and to the point. Don't waste words because you send you send the, the value of words down when you when there's an abundance of them that have no meaning and no place. And yeah. secondly, when you open your mouth, if you're not talking all the time, people listen to you when you open your mouth because it because you, you're sending the value of your words up. And then when you do speak, you have to speak truth, which is what makes that those words even more impactful. And I understand that this yeah. is like a philosophical thing that seems like it doesn't matter, but it doesn't matter. And I would say to you to put, pass it over to you. How did you find that that those directions and how did that affect what your responses were? Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I definitely like that. It was, um, yeah, kind of about being honest and giving a specific compliment. It was like kind of a concrete thing to work on. It was definitely scary at first. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think gradually as I did it, it's gotten, I've gotten kind of more comfortable doing it. And it's definitely, I like having that habit of kind of looking for things that I appreciate about someone, that kind right. of thing. So that's been good. Um, and um, yeah, it's been a, I don't know, I guess it's been, um, yeah, it's been a good experience. Definitely like ended up, um, yeah. And then as much as I, I was definitely like terrified of, like someone getting mad at me or something like right. that but really um yeah 99 percent of the time the person said thank you or something like that or right. um or um yeah or like maybe one person at a time just didn't respond or something but right. that was very now rare. we and that's when i think when we talked the second time i was talking about you was like well 
you know, only one time somebody one. And I mean, you're literally doing this five times a day, every day. You've been doing this for since you've been on the show, which is, you know, a couple months since you've yeah. been on the show. And so how many times did you get no response at all? Uh, it was very rare. So, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Like I said, like it might have been like. Yeah, around one person at a time out of 100 or something like I don't know exactly, but uh yeah, generally, um, yeah, I mean, and then there were maybe one or two times where I was like, oh, I think that person didn't hear me because I was really quiet. But then, <laughs> and then a lot of time, in that case, I usually like did an extra one or something that day. Okay. But, uh, but uh, so yeah. overall, so let me. So we, we talked about this, too. In your mind, in your mind, what was your worst case scenario? Like, what did you think? Worst case scenario? Uh, worst happen? case scenario. I was like, oh, this person's going to yell at me or I'm going to give a compliment to someone that's like with the boyfriend that's going to beat me up or something like that. <laughs> uh, that didn't right. really happen. But And uh, that, none of that happened at all. Yeah, that didn't happen. And uh, how many days? How many days are you laying in five break spot now? You think? You uh, I was just checking my calendar, and it's been like seventy-five days. So, like, I think that's like I want to say is that two and a half months? I'm bad at math. I don't know. But uh, okay, on, let me let, let me go seventy-five. So seventy-five times five, whatever that is. So it's three hundred and seventy women you play compliments to. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good insane. Now, I what percentage? Of, could do that. What percentage of them was nasty to you and cursed you out? Uh, well, that's zero. Zero. Like a, yeah. And what percentage uh, didn't respond back? Not uh, because they couldn't hear you, but just. Right. Like I said, it probably was like maybe one percent or something. So, like, okay. So we're talking about people. less than a percentage of. Yeah. So here's here's my point is that there's this fear. Like we always when we're confronted with these obstacles, we come up with all these different things, this fear of why what's going to happen, worst case scenario. And none of that happened. Not yeah. only did none of that is the one thing that maybe when somebody didn't respond, it was less than one percent, anywhere over three hundred and seventy-five times, and 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 I would I would imagine that it's probably the, that percentage gets smaller and smaller and smaller because as you become more more comfortable with it and more honest and more confident, what happens is the woman feels yeah, the, the they feel the confidence in that energy, and they also can sense the intent. And so one of the yeah. things that we, you know we talk about empathy, right? Is what you want, you know, I mean, if it, what you want is you don't want an adversarial situation where she's she's got a vagina and you're trying to con her into getting in it. The, this, the, the thought is process is I'm a valuable dude and I'm talking to this woman and uh, um, I can get whoever I want to get because I know that I'm valuable and I'm really trying to decide whether or not this person is even the person that's worth my time and energy Yeah, because of the fact that you start to, now I'm not saying we got to that point, but I'm saying just the, could you talk a little bit about the confidence build? Yeah, that definitely. You have? Absolutely. I definitely helped with my confidence. Um, like I said, I still have plenty of moments of self doubt or being like nervous about, talking to someone but but no it's made me way more confident with that but uh yeah like the i remember being so much more scared of that kind of thing before and then mm -hmm. um yeah as you said as i've done it i think i have been able to do it more um yeah more confidently in a way that often does get a good response um from people and um yeah and i remember like sometime at one point uh, yeah i like it was like complimenting someone's earrings and having a really nice long conversation with them. Just we were sitting next to each other at a bar, and then I did actually um, have sex with someone recently in the last. Oh shit! And nice. uh, just accidentally, you just kind of fell in the. Um, <laughs> well, it, I think it was someone I met a couple months ago, so I might have complimented her the first time I met her, and then we uh, were kind of friends, and then um, you passed this. Yeah, I was actually planted doing... a seed, and then uh, yeah. Cause yeah, it was funny because she did mention that I think I was we were hanging out recently and I did was complimenting her again and then at one point I complimented her nails again. She's like, Oh yeah, you complimented my nails another time or something. <laughs> but we ended up uh going home together and it did happen like pretty organically because I was very sincere about everything and um and she was I guess into it and it was just kind of it was very organic in a way that kind of came out of this exercise i think a lot of it. right and i think the other thing was the other thing that there was no i had no expectation 
for you to get laid either. There was no expectation no, for you to get a telephone was, number. Was kind of there was no because the what happens is more than not when when you what I call shoplifting the pussy is. When you're in the store, you know you don't have the money to buy whatever it is you want, so you stick it in your coat and you sneak out and you hope nobody catches you because deep down you know that you don't have you don't have the money to buy what you go. Whereas when there's this relaxed kind of concept, and I, I don't and I don't think that becomes an obvious uh, cognitive thought, but what happens is just the the, the naturalness. In which there's you're practicing sincerity, you're talking to people. There's so you're you you have no intention is because that then it, what it does is it puts their guard down where they can go. Well, it, this is a nice guy and I and I, I he's cool and he seems to be really honest and sincere and he's good looking. Yeah, was, I'd love to suck his dick. You know what I mean? Like it it happens that easy. Yeah, it was actually interesting because it's something she said. I think I was hanging out with her and this other older lady i think i actually complimented both of them that night but it was uh they both mentioned something about how they met a lot of guys who were either looked at them as either like thinking about just se- as a sex object or something or right. not thinking about them at all and then they said that i was like different or something that i was like able to you know like maybe i don't know what it was but uh that i was just like relating to them more i don't know exactly but well it just it gives a, it gives them a sense of that you're listening and that you're paying yeah. attention and that you're present and if you're and if you're objective if you're objective driven there's no sincerity in that you're you're just you're talking to them so that you can make out with them, make out with them so you can finger pop them, make a finger pop them so you can fuck them to, uh, and come so you can leave. Like, that's the course. And so, but what's what's interesting is we don't, I think as men, we don't understand how sensitive women are to that, to the yeah. same token. They're just as sensitive to the sincerity and the, and the, the safeness that they feel over a situation. Now, don't get me wrong. You can be so safe. You can be so safe that you you end up in the friend zone. So the after you started getting comfortable with the the compliments, the the second phase was to introduce something a little. First, I think I said uh, I, I want the compliments to be a little bit more involved, a little more detailed, a little more poetic. So instead yeah. of uh like your umbrella it's it's more like um your calves are amazing or your makeup is impeccable or that color makes your skin pop and so it evolves because now what happens is it's just like you learn the fundamentals when you get and gotten so i've you know over and over again i've I've said these same mantras over you can't let fear have a seat at the table and so the minute that you have an anxiety about who you are or what you are or what your worth is um if you're putting in the work right then nobody could tell you you didn't. You know what you've done. But if you're not putting in the work, if you're real, you're lying to yourself or lying to the people around you or you're cheating on your diet or you're not working as hard on your career, you know it. And the insecurity comes through that. That's how come when they do lie detector tests, they can check your sweat glands, how much you sweat your breathing, the diaphragm, how how shortness of breath they can check the electrical impulses because you're you're and so no matter how smooth you look at it, there is physiological tells that happen yeah. underneath that because fear is an element. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. And so the repetition of going through the process of laying it, it makes you comfortable in that light. And then automatically there's a swag and a coolness because what is swag? It's you're comfortable in your skin. You're comfortable doing what you're doing. And the only way you get comfortable at doing something is through repetition that you, you, I mean, there's other ways. I mean, you can fool yourself into thinking that like I just, you know, talk yourself. I mean, but that's much later event initially, the only way that you can get past that anxiety is through the repetition. Do it, do it, do it, do it. I think that this yeah. horrible thing is going to happen if I do this and I did it and it didn't. I did it again and it didn't. I did it again and it didn't. I did it again. and then it becomes a situation. This is the, logically in your mind. You go, it's absurd for me to even have a fear about something that hasn't even happened. Yeah. And sure, in our mind, we change what the fear is. It's like, well, what? If, but if I do this, then you know, we keep putting these obstacles, 
in in front of us and when we accept that there is a path there's a there's a right answer just your ability to practice in the time and effort you put means you find the right answer and then the second step of that is that you start to believe that there is no right answer that just being able to talk this woman into bed is not even the point anymore. The yeah. point is, do I want to be sleeping with this? Do I want to wake up next to this chick and have to talk to her? Do I think that she's, whether or not she's worth my time or my energy, is she even ready? Were it worth it? She Is she pretty enough? Is she interesting enough? Is she kind enough? Is she is she interesting enough? Or, or am I just looking at this shell, objectifying somebody? You're really going, okay, yeah, I can have sex with you, but... Do I want to, which changes the power dynamic all of a sudden, because we're so accustomed to, 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 you know, it's, yeah. you know, it's like a king, you know, and the gladiators, you know, it's thumbs up or thumbs down. And the fact that, that the intent is that the desperation of that makes women so comfortable that they feel like they could do that. Yeah, definitely. And actually, I think there were another couple of times in the last couple of months where there were people that were pretty interested in like sleeping with me and I just wasn't really interested. So I didn't person. I used to kind of jump on any, right. Anything that 20s, came up and then you, but so I, I'm definitely a little picky. more discerning nowadays, but, uh, but yeah, it's been super helpful for that. And like you said, it's definitely helpful to, I guess, yeah. Exposure therapy, challenging your anxiety. That's something I've actually, yeah. I talk, I, what, I go to like, what's the best too. compliment you yeah. came up with Jacob that you were like, Oh, um, yeah, that I don't know. Cause, uh, yeah, I guess, um, yeah, I, I guess I, I think being specific has definitely been helpful. Cause like, I remember one time I was like saying I liked someone's tattoos and then I was like, oh man, that was kind of big. And then now it's like, if there's something I like about someone's tattoos, I try to be more specific about it. Like this one is, that's a really cool design or like something like that. Um, and then like if I definitely notice more now, like details of like women, their like, nails and things like that. And I'm like, oh, that's like, you know, a really is that, a, is that a thing for you too? Like, do you like pretty hands, pretty nails? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's something I might've not always been as observant about, but I definitely, um, yeah, I definitely appreciate a lot more now. I think kind of the details of like, wow, this was person put together a really cool outfit or whatever yeah. it is. That's um, interesting because it's it's literally so what happens, the process that I put you through is not just it, you know, initially it's like oh, I want to be better with women, I want to be better in social situations, but you also start to you start to discover things about yourself. It's like I, I didn't even know that pretty hands and nails was a turn on to me. Yeah. And and now I'm noticing it, or I'm noticing these things, which is exhibit, you know, and we talk about everything is everything. You know, true wisdom is the understanding of underlying concepts, how they relate to situations that seem irrelevant but really are not. Meaning the same thing is true. There's a difference in a comic who tells the truth and he's being honest. Yeah. and unapologetic and a comic who has kind of created this first of all we we find it disgusting as comics yeah. we find a, a pandering comic is the worst like we it because it's just it's it just seems so disingenuous you know it's like yeah. you're fooling the people and they're stroking their ego and stuff and so i think the same thing is true um, is when you, when you, somebody is attractive to somebody, like you said, you had a couple of occasions where someone, the chick wanted to sleep with you and you were like, I don't really want, I don't really feel like yeah. I feel, but they can feel the fact that you're not thirsty and that you're comfortable with, which makes them, um, oh, well, I should ask this then. Cause my assumption is that they got more aggressive. Did they get more aggressive? Oh, um, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely had. Yeah, sometimes it was like very direct, and I was just I felt bad about saying no, but I was like just kind of diplomatic. About oh, so it you actually had to say no? I don't want to. I I don't want to fuck. Oh, I don't have. Time yeah, like it would got as direct as like, do you want to come home with me? Like that kind of. Stuff. But uh, yeah, so um, yeah, and then I I think I was like oh, I have to get up early at some, and I was like I have to get out of here. <laughs> But uh, Sorry, do I don't you realize know. how good I am 
That, I, I mean, got Jacob amazing turning turnaround. pussy down. Turning people away <laughs> is uh, that's a that's a big deal to be just be turning people away I like that. Jacob. Yeah, that's oh I, I used to not do. That's something I've also started doing in recent in the recent years in general from uh, yeah going to therapy because yeah I used to be like oh man I just want to have sex well, with anyone. But, the thing is, yeah. when you have more options, then you get to be more selective. You yeah, know, that's, it, that that's definitely helps. Yeah. That's part of it with any aspect of life. It's amazing when you get uh, better gigs when you're on TV, you can turn down the shittier gigs yeah. that you're not comfortable with as opposed to when you're starving, you take anything you can get out of, out of desperation, no matter what that is in life. Yeah. You're yeah. settled. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. No, well, what you were that. saying, yeah, about being, uh, yeah, that's actually, what that is one of the things I heard about stand-up when I was starting out that I try to stick to. But like, they, like some advice I heard early on was something about like to be, do, doing comedy like you want to be honest be vulnerable and not need the audience's approval and it's definitely kind of similar to this and i just have it don't have i feel like as much experience putting myself out there dating was but like right yeah i remember how scary it was doing comedy the first time and the more you do it it gets kind of less scary over time so and you stop worrying you... about what their approval is yeah totally it, it's funny i had a um i put something up on youtube some little uh clip of my stand-up and the guy, um, the guy responds, if you have to talk about race, then you're just not funny. Right. Oh, okay. And um, and in my mind, right away, I was like George Carlin, Richard Pryor, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, every great Dick Gregory uh, fucking every great comic ever has yeah. addressed that. But what's interesting is when you get a message like that, if you if you focus on what the critique is, instead of focusing on if if you're not doing the work and then you become very fragile about what people say. So this goes back to another principle that I say is never let a woman define you. I mean, I should amend that as never let anybody define you because it won't be long until you ain't shit. So it's great when they love you, but the minute they stop loving you or something happens, yeah. or, or most of the time, the minute you stop doing what they want you to do, then all of a sudden it's a it's a wrap. It's like all of a sudden when it now stops you benefiting ain't them when it stops. Yeah. yeah. Then all of a sudden you're not shit. And and it could be yeah. it could be as something as simple as I yeah I don't want to I don't want to go to the I don't want to go to the opera. You know now all of a sudden oh this you don't love me that it becomes this whole, this whole thing. But what happens is what ha what's happening is because you're still even at this point you're still you know practicing your sociability increasing your sociability nobody can there's nobody can say you you're not you're not sociable because you i mean we, we're looking at 375 women i know pimps that haven't spoke to 375 yeah. women you know so you're doing the work and so there's a confidence in that you're getting these positive responses which is the confidence in that the fact that you're getting to the point where you're starting to realize your value because one of the things about comedy is you're confident, confident in comedy is because you've been busting your ass doing it and putting yourself out there and putting yourself in front of an audience to be judged so often that yeah. you, you you literally can't you it, it, nobody can deny that you know it's you know if, if a boxer is trained every day and they did their road work every did their bag work and sparred 12 rounds a day or five six rounds whatever the fuck they did and they've done that for the six month at the training camp when you walk down that aisle even though it's a championship fight you know that you've done the work and that is the problem it's when you're when you've not done the work or when you've made yeah. excuses or you and you and you know that you've made these i mean you can lie to everybody else and go you know i did this i did that but the but deep down you know if you ain't shit there's no yeah. lying it's 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 a poker tell and and the fact that you're doing this and was so consistent with it, literally, I had kind of because I've said talked about this before and said I would help somebody and I was like, absolute call me, but you're the only guy that ever called back. Oh really? Yeah, I've not. Wow. I have offered this to plenty of dudes who have all oh, kinds of problems. That's surprising because yeah, this is would be super helpful to a lot of people, uh, comedians, and other people I know for sure. Yeah. Well, I think what's funny too is, that, and I say this about men. This is why. This is why a lot of the red pill dudes are so so bent on talking to women because women are susceptible to they're looking for answers. They don't mind asking questions. They want to be guided where men see 
the guidance as uh, as a negative thing, mm. which is just and there's and a I'm, level of pride for some reason. Even when people don't guys don't know what they're doing or yeah. maybe it's embarrassment, like they yeah, feel sure like a shame that they have to take advice, especially if you're a grown man. Uh, you feel like, you know, I got another yeah, grown man. This is stuff you, you feel like, oh, someone should have taught me this when I was a kid or something like that. Yeah, I, but I you know, know what? We also, you know, when we got to do our taxes, we go to we go to an accountant. Yeah. You know, it's weird. We <laughs> don't we we separate uh, relationships for some reason uh, in every aspect of life. We separate it completely sure. from the same logic that we we would use with any other aspect, whether it's running a business or whether it's learning something new in life, whatever it is. When it comes to relationships, we think that's different. Right. And and don't get me wrong. It's, it, I mean, I think that's the thinking in general. How many people have hit the lotto and then been broke after five years of hitting the lotto because yeah. they never learned about money and never went to people who understand money and investment and stuff. And so this is a situation. So like I've, and this is again, it's, it's funny because I I go back to these same principles because yeah, there, there's always a neo nuance and there's a, a practical application. But the 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 point is the the point is um I got what was the point I was gonna make um that um uh that you two relationships and sex I've said this a hundred times are two things that men are supposed to be good at even though they've had no experience and no training. Yeah. And you're expected to be good at it with no experience yeah. and no training in yeah. a weird way. Yeah. yeah. It's the only and, thing. And the, the, which is ridiculous because you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even expect that of somebody when it comes to playing ping pong, you yeah. know, it, it, you wouldn't expect that of somebody playing tic, something as simple as tic-tac-toe. You know, if you, you got the tic-tac-toe expert of the, you know what I mean? There's, yeah. there's a, so any and, and if you think about um, the social dynamics of relationships and, and the nuances between men and women and women and women and men and men, just human beings in general is so nuanced. And so it changes with emotion. It's a moving and a breathing thing to be to not be aware of what's going on and not have the awareness to know when the when the energy changes is exactly what I mean, like it's it's difficult to do. It's like you're expected to do something that's really difficult. Good. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, to over talk you. Good. You were going to say something, Jake. Um, well, no, that's a good point. And uh, yeah, I do think this framework has been super helpful. And um, I've definitely looked for this kind of thing before. Like uh, I've listened to podcasts about this or read. I read like books like the art of seduction and the game yeah. and stuff. And yeah, yeah. I remember like in my twenties reading the game and like trying it out and just failing miserably. And it was so embarrassing. Like, cause it, I think it had some kind of bad advice, like about the night, like when any time, like I tried to like nag someone. Uh, was, yeah. Like, yeah. Nagging was the was big horrible, thing that guys was, seemed... I really regret that. It's funny out of everything. I, uh, cause I remember reading that book too. And out of everything that they talked about in the book, the one thing that everyone seemed to latch onto was negging. Yeah, right? yeah and the idea and it's of such negging, a bad idea. if people I'm don't negging. know, the idea of negging is like a backhanded compliment that you would give a woman. But it's supposed to really be a very subtle backhanded compliment. And then yeah, guys are just to be like. supposed a backfisted right? compliment. <laughs> yeah, it was so bad. I think I, tr I remember yeah. I tried it once and it was like an example in the book or something was like saying like oh you're not wearing makeup or something and i was like i said that to someone she's like are you an idiot like obviously i'm wearing and i was like oh this is horrible i just get roasted by them uh, it was oh. awful well you know like I, so i think the my method takes those same principles in 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 to consideration but the difference is the first thing is is why the, the first step the first phase is such a simple phase it's you like so you, I mean if you watch the game or you watch these other pickup do me how and all these other dudes in the uh there's a whole group of them who re first of all I find most of them very inauthentic in the first place yeah. very it's always game the parlor tricks and you know neurolinguistics program and body language and stuff but the problem with that is that you know if you look at the poker world series the reason why everybody's in there with sunglasses and hats on is because they know that the the you can't you will always have a poker tell what you're trying to do is hide your tell which is yeah. the truth and so for me it was just obvious to understand that stop trying to hide the truth and be the truth 
And if, yeah, you, if you are the truth, there's nothing to hide. And so that ultimately, it ultimately aids you in, in, uh, in, in the confidence you have because it's, you have nothing to hide. And then the minute there is something to hide that you can't acknowledge, you will always be subject to, to there's a vulnerability, there's an art of war, you, there's a, there's a yeah. side of the gate that's not covered, and it's vulnerable for attack. And, well, and because so you're creating you're literally creating a facade. So that was the big thing with the pickup art thing. Was it always like create a character is what you were doing. Right. Yeah. Right. But when you're creating a character, you're you, it's not like you've done any growing. You're just doing these aesthetic things. So wearing a, a crazy hat and putting on yeah. makeup or whatever it is to stand out. But that has not done anything to build your character. So the problem is when you create a facade, like you said, eventually the cracks of that facade show when you have to deal with something that's a little more than superficial and uh, intelligence wise or emotional wise. And yeah. then those guys begin to freak out. I mean, even it happened to everyone in that book. The irony yeah. is those guys, even the guys who were like the, the top guys. Top guys, mystery and those guys. Yeah, I forget who one of them was, but he was like one of the top guys. And eventually he reached a wall of something where some chick, it, it just became too much. And he went into a full-blown depression. Yeah. Yeah. Because he hadn't worked he was, on himself. Yeah, I think it was mystery or something like that. I don't remember so, if it was mystery or not. And because... But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The guy Strauss was the guy that wrote the book. Neil and he, Strauss, yeah, yeah. He so and he ended up getting married and stuff. And and but I mean, you know, when you create that persona, if you do it long enough, it becomes, um, it becomes, you know, some of it becomes natural. But the reality is, when there's real change in yourself, then it, then you're not faking it. So you're not you're, yeah. you're not hope you're not doing something that you hope doesn't get discovered by somebody you don't oh, because because then once you get exposed then yeah totally. you're then the insecurity goes nuts and you really have no control over it at all no so, yeah definitely so you know on the first stage is it's it's uh getting past the fear and being honest that's it i don't want you to get laid i don't want you to get a number I don't want, and the second phase is to 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 get more comfortable where you start to be more expressive because the more artistic you are, the more meticulous you are, the more detailed you are. So if you're detailed in your words, then you'll be detailed in eating pussy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think uh, I definitely, yeah, that was the case when I hooked up with that person. <laughs> but uh, recently, <laughs> but uh, very detailed, Jacob. Yeah, I feel like I was very detailed about that. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I agree, and it and I could definitely relate to that as a comedian because, like you said, like specific, uh, like yeah, if someone's like, oh, that one line you said is like really, yeah. good, I'm like, oh wow, that, they really were paying attention. That's really nice. Yeah, because it 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 it, it because yeah. so the best way I can explain this is that any art, right? The whole purpose of art is is to evoke emotion. There's mm -hmm. no other reason for art other than to evoke emotion. You know, you people go to a gallery. How does this make you feel? Like, what does it, what was the emotion? It's strokes of passionate or whatever. There's bold colors. It's to evoke emotion. And the only way you can evoke emotion is through emotion. You have to give of yourself. You have to, you, you have yeah. to cut, you have to carve it with a knife. You have to carve a sculpture of emotion with a knife of emotion. You can't, you can't do it with, with a hammer or nothing like it has to be built of the same thing it's you know it's it's a it's an interesting and then and to explain that to somebody and then make them execute it is difficult to do because how do you explain that to them how do you tell somebody to be emo i need you to be more emotional yeah and uh that's definitely something i've struggled with like i tend to be kind of more reserved or have a monotone and i think yeah growing up i just felt really nervous about being too emotional or something so that's something i've always been trying to work right on, now but, what's what's funny yeah. about that is we even talked about that was where yeah. you know initially when we first talked we were talking about where the, where what what were your problems you kind of explained to me what were your problems just not being outgoing not going and then we we kind of delved into why those things were yeah yeah which i think is a lot of like growing up 
uh, a lot of my family was like that. Some of my, my parents did sometimes be a little critical or that kind of thing. So I think I just kind of got really nervous about saying the wrong thing. So I would just be like kind of more reserved or quiet because I was got in my head about right, oh, if you don't yeah. if you don't have an opinion, then you don't have to worry about your opinion being wrong. Right, right. So, and, uh, yeah. And uh, there is, and and so, it's, and you talked about that. Extent. Well, I mean, we and I talked about because I want you to understand that, like when I go through the process, it's not, it's different for everybody else. You you kind of so as I'm talking to you, I'm I'm getting information and I'm making these up. There's there's inferences because everything is connected to something else. There's a trauma that makes you introverted and and so on and so forth. And even I was talking to you. Um, we, how much time we got? We we, we want to do got, this behind the Patreon. We got like uh, we got about like three minutes left. All right. So um, why don't we do the plugs and then we'll take it to the Patreon or whatever. You got anything going on coming up? Um. Oh me. Uh yeah. So uh yeah. I think I mean I have like stand up shows and comedy shows coming up. Uh, I guess for most of that info, people can find it at jacobwilliamscomedy.com or my social media like TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter is Mr. Jacob Williams. I also have a one hour comedy special on YouTube that's free. It's an emotional roller coaster, and it, the audio version streaming on like SiriusXM and most like music streaming platforms and stuff. Dope, like that. dope, 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 so dope. And um, and you're you're in the city working, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I do. Yeah, I'm trying to do spots around town at the clubs, and uh, okay. some of them I haven't gotten into yet. But I try to do whichever ones I can. Any independent shows I can. Just I'm working on a new hour of material right now, so just dope, kind of dope. still developing it. So dope, Harry. Talk to me, babe. Uh, you could go to all my stuff, uh, social media at Harry Terjanian, and then if you also want relationship consultations, you can email me at uh, advicefromharry at gmail dot com, and we can set up rates and go from there. Um. Just uh, y'all know Google me, bitch. Uh, you know for <laughs> consultations, DanteNero.com. I'm actually working on the website, so it's easier to get to the consultations. Um, keep in mind the Patreon. Please sign up for the Patreon. You do that, and it keeps us doing this. Also, um, the Patreon guys, we we Harry and I are making a concerted effort to asking your questions. So the people that are in the inner circle, please, please, please send me your questions whatever's on your mind put it on and we're going to be covering that pretty regularly now we're trying to step it up and involve and so i need you guys to spread the word and everybody who listens spread the word and you know i mean because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move this whole podcast to another level it's it's about time that we do that um so patreon.com slash man school 202 don't forget the youtube harry is busting his ass with the clips on the youtube and putting up clips and stuff like that so you can check that out stuff like and share and subscribe is really important um give us a uh, ratings whatever um we're gonna go to the patreon i got some deep shit to talk about jacob's voice which is we talked about that a little oh, bit. Okay, so interesting. Little, yeah. So what else we got to work on here for Jacob going yeah, forward? Yeah, but this is an interesting concept step. about about what happened. We'll we'll talk. You got to be on the Patreon to kind of know what we're talking about. You wanna, yeah, we're gonna do know. a little more in depth stuff. So if you want to join us, patreoncom slash manschool 202 That's where we do the, all the bonus content, including the listener mail, and we're gonna go over there with Jacob. So if you want to join us, we appreciate you helping us support the show, and uh, we'll head over to Patreon, guys.